Journey to Ancient Civilizations, 6th Grade Social Studies, Peabody Charter School, Santa Barbara, California. Cro-Magnon Culture. The beginnings of human life are difficult to fully document. Most of what we know is based upon a few extremely old and rare artifacts and fossil remains. One fairly well-documented group of early human fossils, known as Magdalenians, Homo sapiens sapiens, dates from around 18,000 to 10,000 BC. They are more commonly known as Cro-Magnons, named after the discoverer of their fossils, Monsieur Magnon, in 1870. The most famous archaeological site of these remains is the Lascaux Cave Complex that dates back to around 15,000 BC and is located in the Dordogne Valley of France. There are several chambers in this cave with beautiful color paintings and etchings of animals common to the area at that time. There are bison, felines, elk, bulls, bear, ibex, horses, and woolly rhinoceros. There is also a painting of a bison charging a stick figure man. While the purpose and meaning of these paintings remain a mystery, they tell us much about what early people ate, the animals common to this area, and the tremendous technological and artistic accomplishments of the Cro-Magnon people. Egyptian Culture People emerged from their nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyles to become Neolithic city dwellers. The time for this transition differed from culture to culture. Egypt made this transition quite early, around the 5th millennia BC. Independent cities were conquered by one another until the area from the Nile Delta, known as Lower Egypt, all the way to the first cataract on the Nile, known as Upper Egypt, was unified under the rule of Pharaoh Narmer around 3100 BC. This began the period of Egyptian history known as the Old Kingdom, from around 3100 to 2200 BC, with Memphis as the capital city in the north. Great pharaohs of this time included Djoser, builder of the Step Pyramid, Sneferu, builder of the first smooth-sided pyramid, and Khufu, builder of the Great Pyramid at Giza. In time, leadership weakened and Egypt was once again splintered into several independent states. During the Middle Kingdom, from around 2200 to 1600 BC, unification was restored and leadership shifted to the city of Thebes, Luxor, in the south. Asiatics from the area of Palestine migrated to Egypt and worked themselves into positions of authority in the government. They were known as the Hyksos and became the dominant rulers of the Middle Kingdom. Theban rulers eventually regained power and forced the Hyksos pharaohs out of Egypt. This ushered in a period in Egyptian history known as the New Kingdom, from around 1600 to 1000 BC. During this time, the empire was expanded from Sudan in the south to Turkey in the north. Great temples such as Karnak, Luxor, Der al-Bari, and Marinar Abu were built around the capital of Thebes. Important pharaohs of the time included Hatshepsut, Thutmosis III, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and Ramses II. Toward the end of this time, Egyptian leadership waned, and the area eventually came under Greek rule. Greek culture began not on the Greek mainland, but on the island of Crete around 3000 BC. These people were known as the Minoans and had a highly advanced civilization as evidenced by the beautiful frescoes and architecture found at their capital city, Knossos. They became skilled gold and bronze workers and excelled in trade throughout the Mediterranean Sea. At the peak of its cultural achievement, the island was devastated by tidal waves resulting from the volcanic eruption of nearby Santorini around 1440 BC. In their weakened state, the Minoans soon fell to the mainland invaders known as the Mycenaeans. The Mycenaeans adopted much of the art and craftsmanship of the Minoans. City-states such as Sparta, Athens, Delphi, and Mycenae became powerful independent governments. Homer's epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey, tell us of a temporary unification of these cities as they went to war against Troy in Asia Minor. Around 1100 BC, the region was invaded and conquered by the Dorians, most likely people from northern Greece. The Dorians brought the skill of ironwork with them, but much of the culture and writing passed down from the Minoans and Mycenaeans was lost. This 400-year period was known as Greek's Dark Age. Eventually, city-states once again reached a measure of independence and replaced monarchs with leaders appointed by a representative council, an early form of democracy. Around 490 BC, several city-states, Sparta and Athens in particular, 
joined together to defend themselves from a much larger Persian army. The famous Battle of Marathon sent Persia its first defeat. Athens emerged from these wars as a leader in the region and ushered in a golden age of Greek culture under the leadership of Pericles around 461 BC. Under his guidance, the Parthenon on the Acropolis was constructed. Athenian ceramics, theater, sculpture, and philosophy became defining elements of classical Greek life known as Hellenism. While Athens flourished culturally, Sparta matured in the art of warfare. Around 430 BC, Athens and Sparta entered into a series of battles with each other resulting in the siege and defeat of Athens. These wars greatly weakened the region and set the stage for an invasion by Philip II of Macedon. Philip's heir and son was Alexander the Great. He led an army of over 100,000 people from Greece, conquering Persia, Egypt, and parts of India, spreading Hellenism wherever he went. He died after only 10 years of rule, and the empire he established was divided among his generals. General Ptolemy took control of the region of Egypt, putting an end to Egyptian self-governance. According to Roman legend, around the year 753 BC, Remus and Romulus, descendants of Aeneas from Troy, were left to die in a basket along the Tiber River by an evil, power-hungry uncle. A friendly she-wolf took them in and raised them as her own. These two wolf boys later had an argument that led to a fight over where to begin a new city. Romulus killed his brother Remus, founded his city on the Palatine Hill, and named the city after himself, Rome. For the next 200 years, Rome was a monarchy ruled by a mixture of good and bad Roman and Etruscan kings. Around 500 BC, Rome threw out the last of the Etruscan kings and formed a new representative style of government called the Republic. In the Republic, voting citizens elected representatives called senators. From this pool of senators, a consul or president was elected to give leadership to the government. It was during this time that Rome took control of the entire Mediterranean region. Julius Caesar was a consul, and a very popular and powerful general. Around 48 BC, Julius took control of the government, ignoring the rules of the Senate. Julius had become a dictator, and the Senate did not like it. After four years of rule, they assassinated him on March 15, 44 BC. This marked the end of the Republic, but the beginning of the Pax Romana, a 180-year period of general peace. Julius's adopted son and nephew, Octavian, became his heir and later changed his own name to Caesar Augustus. The name Caesar had now become a title of power and authority. Rome prospered tremendously during this time, which led to many great public projects. Roads and aqueducts assured safe travel and ample water. Colosseums, circuses, and theaters provided entertainment, and public baths provided fitness and relaxation for the masses. Forums, the Roman version of the Greek Agora, flourished with each new emperor expanding the marketplace in his own name. It was also during this time that Christianity first began. Jesus was born and raised in the Roman territory of Palestine. Because of a perceived threat to the religious establishment in Jerusalem, Jesus was crucified in A.D. 33. Easter is the celebration of his resurrection three days after his death. His followers, known as disciples or apostles, spread the news of Jesus' message and resurrection, and many people throughout the empire believed them. Christianity came under a lot of scrutiny and was seen by many emperors as a threat to the empire. Over the years, tens of thousands of Christians were martyred for their beliefs. Around AD 180, the empire slowly began to deteriorate. There were attacks by barbarians from the outside. From the inside, power-hungry generals knocked off emperors that they disagreed with. The army was big and expensive, and taxes were high for the regular class citizens. Around AD 300, Emperor Diocletian divided the empire in half, Rome ruling the west and Byzantium ruling the east. This forever split the empire, but did nothing to alleviate the problems it was facing. Around AD 330, Emperor Constantine moved the capital of the empire entirely to the city of Byzantium and changed the name of that city to Constantinople. He also gave in to the Christian way of life and legalized it for the first time. After this, Western Rome limped along for another 140 years before it finally fell to the German barbarian King Odeker. All that remained of Western Rome was the Christian church at St. Peter's in Rome. Music